So do you believe in God? No. You're an atheist? Yes. MJ, you're our sound man for the day. Ah, you've agreed to let me talk to you for a few moments and I appreciate that. So do you believe in God? No. You're an atheist? Yes. Well, let me ask you a question and think before you answer it because it's thought provoking. As an atheist, do you really believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? Is that the scientific belief? Well, if you're an atheist, you default to that position. Either there was an initial cause that made all this beautiful creation, made nature, or nothing created it, and nothing can't create anything. That's why it's scientifically impossible for nothing to make anything. So do you really believe that? It makes no sense. So maybe you, you wouldn't call me an atheist, but I do agree that something can't come out of nothing. Well, it's not just something coming out of nothing. It's nothing being the creative source that made everything. Flowers and birds and trees and the sun, moon, stars, fruits, the seasons. Utterly impossible. Yeah. Let me give you some information that will help you to know that God exists. Just beside us, there's a building. How do you know there was a builder? The building is built. It has been built. Yeah, the building is proof of a builder. Creation is absolute proof of a creator. It's impossible for nature to have made itself. Because... Can you be honest with me? Yeah. You think you're a good person? Yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? A f fair percentage. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, in your whole life? Is stealing time... Steal? Of course, it's stealing time from your boss. My time is money. It's like stealing money. I've stolen. Yes. Have you ever used God's name in vain? What's an exact? I don't want to use it, but it's using the words OMG or using yeah. the name of Jesus or God as a cuss word. Yeah. You've done that? Uh-huh. Would you ever use your mother's name as a cuss word? In my language, yes, we do. Use your mother's name instead of a filth word? Uh-huh. Whoa, that's dishonoring your mother. That's a terrible thing to do. Most people wouldn't do it. But you've taken the name of God the holy name of God that godly Jews won't even speak or write down it's so holy and used it in the place of a filth word beginning with S to express disgust. MJ, that's called blasphemy. Very serious. So, so serious in the Old Testament it's punishable by death. One to go. And again, I appreciate your honesty and your patience. Jesus said whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah. Yeah. Have you had sex before marriage? Yeah. So, here's a summation. I'm not judging you, this is for you to judge yourself. MJ, you've just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Ask God that, but uh, if it's a, just a yay or nay, then guilty. Yeah, the Bible says all liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, do you know what God did to open the door to everlasting life for humanity? He did something wonderful. Do you know? He sent Jesus? Yeah, you got it. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the world. Most people know that, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said just before he died, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court and someone pays you fine, even though you're guilty, a judge can let you go. He can say, MJ, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid him. You're free to go. And you can do that which is legal and right and just. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid your fine. And even though you and I are guilty of a multitude of sins that we don't take seriously, we don't think we're going to perish on Judgment Day. We don't think we're in, in danger of coming under God's wrath. Even though we've got a multitude of sins, Christ died on the cross, paying the fine for the law that you and I had violated. God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Himself said, No greater love has a man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid His life down, 
He was crucified, suffered in the agony that we cannot begin to imagine. The wrath of God came upon him, and then he cried out on the cross, it is finished when he had suffered for our sins. That means God can dismiss our case, and justice can still be done even though mercy is extended. Even though you and I are guilty, God can let us live forever because of the death and resurrection of Christ. MJ, that's the greatest news any human being could ever hope to hear, that death has been destroyed. Why would God do that? Because He is love. He is the essence of love. And love does that sort of thing. Love will give you life for another human being if you care about them that much. Make sure you're sincere in your faith. Ask God to forgive you and cleanse you and create a clean heart in you. And the moment you do that, repent and trust in Jesus, God will grant you everlasting life. He doesn't just give us the right key. He gives us the door. Listen to what Jesus said. I am the door. If any man enter by me, he shall be saved. So God's offering everlasting life as a free gift. So I don't know if you can detect this, MJ, but I love you, I've just met you, but I love you, I care about you, and the thought of death seizing upon you horrifies me. If you were to die tonight, I'd cry my eyes out tomorrow, just having met you for this short moment. If you seek to hold on to that life, you're gonna lose it like a rich man who fell into the ocean wearing a money belt that weighed 40 pounds. It was full of gold coins. He wouldn't take it off because he loved his money, and it took him to his death. Sin is like that. It's deliriously pleasurable. We love it. We won't let go of it. But the moment you ask Christ to forgive your sins, He'll give you a new heart with new desires, so you thirst after righteousness. That's the miracle of conversion. God will transform your heart on the inside so you love that which is right and pleasing to the God that gave you life. So you're going to think about what we talked about? Oh yes, Ray. I will. I'd like to give you a book that we've got called The Bible's Four Gospels. Can I give it to you as a gift? You may. Oh, you want that on camera? No, that's... Oh, no. Yeah. Thank you. Man. Yeah, that would be actually nice. Oh, what's that big, huge dollar bill you got there? <laughs> you want one of these? <laughs> it's a hundred dollars. Show me that again, MJ. What did you do? What are those? These are three million dollars. Three one million dollar bills? One million dollar bill. I was Someone them. gave them to you? Two Johns. Two, two Johns. John 1 and John 2. Are you thinking about what we talked about? Yes. You are thinking seriously about it. I seriously and each each week weekend that I'm here, gears spin and I'm thinking I'm... last week I asked you a weird thing that was in my mind. When I go into a men's wear store for the first time, I really appreciate it when an attendant says, if you're looking for jackets, our most popular items are on that rack over there, and they're on special at the moment. So, welcome to our store. Here's some of our most popular tracks, and they're on special at the moment. We call this the Starter Kit. It's made up of 100 of each track and 50 Ten Commandment coins. These coins are really easy to give out. Just begin with a warm good morning and then say something like, I've got a gift for you. It's a coin with the Ten Commandments on one side and the Gospel on the other. I've even tossed a handful of these onto a sidewalk among teenagers as I rode by and you should have seen them fight to get one. This is the good person test in comic form. And who can resist reading a comic? Then there's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners and these really are funny. Just say, this will lift your day. It's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. And of course, it contains the gospel. And finally, a super popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? People love these. Or you could just put it down somewhere and it's sure to get picked up. Go to livingwaters.com, click on the store, and then tracks.